All right, welcome back to Adobe Photoshop 2024, and we're finally going to start adjusting an image here. So the first thing that we need to look at is we have set up our toolbar and we set up our panels. Now we're gonna come on over here to just this adjustment panel real quick. You'll notice up here it says adjustment presets. Um, we're not gonna be using those in these set of tutorials. So I'm gonna take this little arrow and, and clear it out. Now I've been using this for a long time so I can just use the icons. It might be easier if you're starting out to come up here to this little button right here and click it. And what that's gonna give you is the word of what it is. So I'm gonna leave this on here for now, but we're just gonna go ahead and use that. These are the different adjustments that we're gonna use. The problem with Photoshop is there's a whole bunch of different ways to make adjustments in the program. One is called destructive and the other is called non-destructive. Now I know destructive sounds bad, but it's not really as bad as it sounds. What it means is when you make the adjustment, making it brighter or darker or whatever, it automatically applies it right then and there. So let's take a look first at the difference between a destructive and a non-destructive adjustment. So to do an adjustment that's destructive, you're gonna come up here and go to image, adjustment, and anything that you see up here is basically an adjustment. The main ones you're gonna be using are gonna be these right here. We're gonna just go to the two main, which are curves and levels. And you can always tell what is an important adjustment because right here it has a quick key. So Command M, which is for a Mac, or Control M for a PC, that would be the quick key. I prefer curves over levels, so we're gonna go ahead and hit curves, and it's gonna bring up this little symbol, okay? And when you are working, this is important, make sure you are in light zero to 255. Pigment and ink is for working in CMYK, and we do not use that. You do not want your adjustments. The way you can tell is your black point is over here and your white point is on the other side. So let's go ahead and just make an, any adjustment. So I just brightened up everything and I hit OK. When I hit OK, it physically applies that to the image, OK? A non-destructive adjustment is a little bit different. You're going to, in this case, go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then we'll hit the same thing, which is Curves. We'll just hit OK. And you'll see over here now, it's added this layer adjustment. And so when I make the adjustment here in properties, it's not physically applying it to the image. It's applying it as a layer and it's just a preview. So I can turn this off and it disappears or I can turn it on and it reappears. In this case, we're gonna be learning by using adjustment layers. We're just gonna simplify it and use one of the ways. So I'm just gonna take this and drag it down here to the trash can. The other and more easy way to make a adjustment layer is simply just to come to here in curves and click this and boom. That way you don't have to do all those crazy drop downs. Just hit curves and we do this. Now on this layer, we have two things. This first symbol that we see right here, that's the adjustment and it's always seen in properties. So properties shows you your adjustment. This white thing here is the mask and we'll get to the mask in a second. So if we click on this and we go to properties, whatever I do to this curve is going to be applied as a preview. So the way curves work is right here, this is your highlights. So if you slide this this way, it brightens your highlights. You can either slide this or you can come up here to this little symbol, click this and slide this directly to the left. You'll notice the little corresponding triangle below moves as well, but that's increasing your highlights. Right down here, we have increasing your contrast or your black point, your contrast. See how it's getting darker, okay? If we go up, it's taking your contrast and making it flatter, so your blacks are getting flatter, okay? This is your curves line, okay? And when I say up, I mean in this direction here, we're going actually this direction, not sliding up the rail, okay? So this would be your midtones because it's right in the middle. And if we go up, it makes it brighter. Down, it makes it darker. If you don't like what you're doing, you can take that point, click on it, hit delete, and it will disappear, okay? The cool thing is, and why curves are so great, is we can really adjust this curve. However, you don't want to adjust it too much. So I could say in this, oh, my brights up here are too bright. So let me darken that area. See, these are my highlights and this is my shadow, but I want to open my shadow up a little bit. So I have this slow S curve, right? 
You don't want 25,000 points, just about two, and have a slow S curve and you can adjust your image, okay? So that is making what we call global adjustment. It affects everything in the whole image. The problem with this is, is usually by the time we've gotten here, because normally we would be doing some of this adjustment in Adobe Camera Raw. That at this point, we really are looking at more selective adjustments. And so a selective adjustment would just be in a certain area. So I'm just gonna delete this just so it makes it simpler. Let's say we just wanted to do the sky, or just this area of the sky. So the simplest way to make a selective adjustment is to select something. And we have a bunch of selection tools. We have the rectangular marquee tool, which is not really helpful in photography. We have the elliptical, single, and that. Really, those are better for doing graphics, right? We have the lasso, okay? The lasso is a weird tool because it actually has a feather. And I'll show you what the feather means here in a little bit, but I'm just gonna put this at 55. And so I could circle the area that I wanna adjust so I can make a circle around that. And you'll see it noted by the little racing ants. And then if I come over here and click curves, watch what happens. Only the area that was selected is in white. Everything else is in black. And the reason for this is white shows an adjustment, which is this curve. And I'll make it really bright so you can see what's going on. Black hides it, meaning it doesn't apply it. So since there's black in this mask, and this mask looks like this. So all this area where there's black, the adjustment isn't happening. In the white areas, it is happening. Let's bring this back. So in this one, as I turn it on and off, you can see it's only happening in that area that I selected. So let's go ahead and delete this. So let me show you what the lasso does. So we'll take the lasso and we're gonna make feather zero. We're gonna make a selection. And then I'm gonna take this other, and make this 66. I'm gonna hold shift. That is a way to add to a selection, which we will learn. And make this one as a feather. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit curves and we're gonna make that same adjustment and watch what happens. So when we had zero feather, there's no transition. It's basically 100% of the adjustment and then none of it. When there's 66 pixels, what that means is right in here, it's 100% of the adjustment, but at one point and 66 pixels this way, it feathers it out to zero and that helps it blend. Now, obviously it's not blending in this image, because it's drastic and I'm trying to show you what happens. But normally when you make just a freeform selection, you actually need to add a feather. Now, the amount of feather is determined on the size of the image, all right, and the size that you're selecting. So let's go ahead and do this. And so I've got a 66 feather and I'm just gonna circle this mountain and boom, it did that. Now watch what happens if I try to circle these people. Ooh, it did it. It's because the image is so large. Normally it doesn't do that. Let's make it larger because my image is so big. Let's do 99 and I'll just try to circle one person. And you can see it says no pixels were selected. And that's because the feather is larger than the area selected. So it needs to have a smaller feather. Usually uh, I do somewhere around 55, 66 for normal selections, but if you were to get into smaller areas, usually I would switch this to something around 11 or 12 pixels, and that seems to work pretty well. In this case, we take the lasso, we circle something, we click any adjustment, this would work, I can do it for levels here. So we can change the levels, and that makes the adjustment in that location. Just like anything else, if you don't like it, you can turn it off. So that is making a selective adjustment. And that lets you tone a specific area. At this point in Photoshop, most adjustments you're gonna be making and most adjustments in general are selective because there are specific areas that you need to manipulate. So that is the lasso tool. And the lasso tool is a pretty cool tool to use. It also has other tools. We can see it's nested under here. We have the polygonal lasso tool and that just kind of makes straight lines. So if you're, doing something like around a building and you need to do straight lines, it makes it really easy. Okay. We'll go ahead and hit Command D, which is deselect. 
and we're good. And the last one is the magnetic lasso tool, and it kind of tries to follow a path from wherever you tell it to go. And it doesn't really work so great. So I'm not a huge fan. I absolutely never use it, but I know some people do like it. So that's the magnetic lasso tool. Normally I just have the lasso tool up and that's the main one that I use. So before I said you can make a selection and if you want to add to that selection and it can either be here, I can add to this or add to a different area. So if I wanted to select this, I hold my shift key and then I can select that, all right? And then if I wanna add and make a little more onto this, I hold my shift key and notice I'm going in a full circle from beginning to end. You have to kind of tell it where to go, all right? If you want to subtract from your selection, and you can see when I hold that shift key, notice next to the lasso, it, it brings up a plus. Well, if I hit the alt or option key, option on a Mac, alt on a PC, it brings up that minus. So I can circle the area I want to remove and it removes it and it leaves that area. That is how you add and subtract to a selection. So whatever's selected, you come up here, go to levels or curves, make your adjustment, and in that area, you're gonna see that adjustment being applied with that mask, which shows the white and the black, right? So that is a selective adjustment using the lasso tool. Now we have a bunch of other selection tools, all right? And right here we can see, this is our new one, this is the object selection tool. I'm gonna to bring up an object or a person so we can see that. This is our old tool, which is the quick selection tool, which I don't use anymore, but is what I used to use. We have the magic wand, the magic wand, wherever you click, it will try to select in an area. So if I click my magic wand, any values up here that are close to that, it's gonna select it. It does not work good for a tonal scale image like a photo. This is great for using in graphic design where you have all black, all white. It makes a whole lot more sense. All right, so these are our main selection tools and notice that they're sitting out here. So let me bring up a picture of an image with some objects in it and I can show you how object selection works. Okay, I'm gonna bring up my other image so I can show you something. So if you guys remember in the last tutorial we did set our color preferences up. So go to color, color settings. And right here we said, hey, if the color profile doesn't exist or is wrong, what do you want me to do? And I put convert to working. And then I tick this little box that says ask when opening. And this way you can see what's going on. So we're gonna hit open. I'm gonna to go to the camera, open. And this is that profile box. It's a missing profile. It doesn't have one. So what do you want me to do? I want you to assign the working profile, which is Adobe 1998, yes. And boom, now that is color managed. So let's take a look at the object selection tool. So when you click this, it's gonna start working depending on how fast your computer is. You'll see this little thing up here, spinning around in circles. And once it's done, when you hover over something here in the image, you're gonna see it turn a color. I think I have mine set up as blue, but I'm not perfect, all right? So it's using artificial intelligence to identify different areas. So it's kind of a pink color. So Every object in here, it's going to try to guess. Notice it didn't get it perfect in this one, but when I slide over, it picks up that area. So let's go here to the little iPad. If I click the iPad once, notice the racing dots are now around this area. That area is selected. I can come in here with my curve. I can make the brightness or selective adjustment. It has masked that out to that location. It's using artificial intelligence to do this, right? That is the object selection tool. And you can select multiple images. So I can select this one. And just like before, when you want to add, you can hit the shift key and click again, and it's going to select the next one. You can see right here, it didn't get this little area in the selection tool, and that's okay. We can take the lasso tool. We know add is shift, and we can just circle around that, and boom, it's added that to that selection. Remember, it's just making a selection, it's not doing anything, okay? So that is how the object selection tool works. Quick selection tool is a little bit different. In you, you find something, so we'll take this and we'll just kind of click on it, or and it automatically selects it. I'll do it down here on this Wacom tablet. Notice it's trying to guess where that area is. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect it. So 
I'm coming down here, it's made that selection. Sometimes you have to go all the way around it, but you just click on an object and it will eventually try to do it. Usually it does a pretty good job. It's not as good as the object selection tool. It's just a different way to make a selection, okay? So that is object selection tool. We saw this, the, this would be good if everything was totally white. I can click on this and you can see it's gradated. With using the magic wand tool, you have tolerance. So as you raise the number, it's gonna select more of an area. You lower the number, it's gonna be less sensitive and select less of the area. I don't find this useful at all. So we have object selection tool and that. So I'm gonna come in here and notice we've got a whole bunch of objects or people or selections. So I can click on this once again, and it's gonna identify or do its best to identify where an object starts and stops. So in this one, it knows that. I can click on that, it gets that elephant, okay? And I come here, it picks up that elephant. This one, it picks up that elephant, that elephant, that elephant, that elephant, okay? So it's picking up those individual items and I can make selections or adjustments with them. Now, you don't have to use the selection tools here. You can also come up here and do select and we have subject, sky, focus area, and color range. So we have some other options. Uh, we don't have sky in this, so that's not gonna be helpful, but I can hit select subject, and it will say it's gonna disregard my original one, and it might pick up all the subjects in here. So notice it didn't just pick up one, it picked up all the subjects. That can be helpful. Um, sky works very good. Uh, focus area is not so useful. Color range is helpful on the rare occasion that you need to pick up just a specific color. What is probably the most useful and we'll just deselect everything, is this Select and Mask. Select and Mask is available right up here, so you can go to Select, Select and Mask, or if you click on any of the selection tools, you're gonna see up here, Select and Mask, and we get this totally new window. And over here, notice that we have the Quick Selection tool. This is a re uh, edge refining brush. It used to be used for hair. This is just a brush tool, so wherever you brush, it's gonna make a selection, not so helpful. Here's that object selection tool that we saw before. There's our feather tool. All right, so all the main tools are right in here. Or we could just hit select subject. In this case, let's do the object selection tool and we'll select that elephant right there. When it does it, right now I'm in a specific viewing mode. Those viewing modes are right up over here. So if I come to this area and I click this area, I can, view anyway. So if I want to view via onion skin or marching ants or whatever, I like overlay. We're just going to leave it there. It's going to show you how it works. Now, once you've made a selection, we can refine that selection. Over here, you'll see global refinement. So we can smooth out the selection. We can feather the selection. So if you remember on the lasso, I can feather that out and you'll see here it gets kind of a soft fade to it. Um, so we're blending that in so it's not such a hard selection. We can increase the contrast and we can shift the edge. What the shift the edge means is if I move it this way, it moves the selection into the animal. But out this way, it moves it out of the animal. So I'll do it drastically so you can see it. So let's go ahead and select that elephant. And if I move this all the way out, you can see the selection now in white is way out there on this edge. So when we brighten it, this edge halo, it's gonna look horrible, is there. If we wanna move it in, we click this way, and now you can see in the red inside the animal, it shifted it in. If we go back to zero, um, and we'll just get close, it's gonna be right on the animal. We're not gonna use a feather, and we're good. Now, once you've made what you want to select, you can output it in a few different ways. So we can output it as a selection, a layer mask, a new layer, a new layer with a layer mask, and so on. For right now, we're just gonna do a selection. We'll get into the others later. So when I hit okay, it goes out as that selection. And then once again, we can come in here and click curves. Notice this is our mask right here, just the elephants. And so when I make my adjustment here to bring it up, it's only happening in that location. So those are selective adjustments. So what I want you to do is just practice making some global and selective adjustments. They don't have to be good, just practice doing them. 
the one thing I need to tell you to do is if you're making the adjustment, this area up here needs to be selected. Notice the white box around it, all right? So we've got this white line all the way around. If I click here, the white box moves to there. That means that, means that the mask is selected. So notice there's no property or way to make it brightness or darkness. You have to come over here and click there to get that to come up. And you can move this at any time. The cool thing about layered adjustments are you can save them as a PSD file or a Photoshop file. And when you open it up next time, they'll be there. So that's one of the really cool things. You don't lose that adjustment or the ability to make it non-destructive. It's always non-destructive. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. If you found this helpful and could give us a thumbs up, that would be great. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And don't forget to subscribe.